So I've had a couple of videos lately going over uh, the income that my farm is producing right now and sort of the potential of what you can do, which is a really loaded topic and you really can't explain it in short YouTube videos like this. But somebody brought up the question, um, what, how could you start a farm part time if you already have an income and you don't want to quit your job yet? And I'd put some thought into that, and that's what this video is going to be about. Um, I sort of started my farm part-time uh, back in 2020. I basically was doing it part-time. This field was no deer fence, no nothing, and I had about 20 or 30 beds worth of production going at the time. Um, and it was a disaster. I really didn't know what I was doing yet. Um, I basically just fed the deer, but I would say I was working about 20 hours a week. And when I say part-time, I'm saying you have at least 20 hours a week to put into farming. And uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would have started part-time probably three or four years earlier because it would have helped a lot with the um, you know transition into what my business was before and to what it is now. Because originally I started just reselling other farms products and it was I had to switch just because the numbers weren't there. My business basically failed. The first t uh, version of my business failed. And this is really where my heart's at anyway, is growing. So that's another story for another time. But part-time farming is doable, in my opinion. It's challenging, but there are some advantages to it. You know, one of the reasons why it was easy for me to start selling my products immediately is because I had already built my market. Um, I started selling into the same markets I already had from reselling other farms products. So I was already, already had a lot of relationships with restaurants around here and the farmer's market I had already been doing for three or four years. So that helped a lot when I started to sell my own products because people were already ready to buy them. And that part takes a while. You can't that's not going to happen overnight, no matter how much money you have to start. Um, building your market is building relationships, and that takes time. There's just It's just not going to happen right away. You know, you could sort of skip some of that by going to a bigger market. I'm doing that right now, um, and if you have a really good product, you're going to get a lot of sales right away. Um, but if you're a beginner, you need to have you need to have really good product to be able to do that anyway, and you're also going to take a couple of years to get good at growing. It's hard. Um, when I first started, I had already been familiar with a lot of the guys growing on YouTube and people like Curtis Stone, who I'm going to talk about in this video. I had been following him for years and I thought it was going to be really easy for me because I'm like, oh yeah, I've watched all his videos. Not at all what the reality is. You know, you can watch all the YouTube videos you want, but until you actually get out here and start growing, you're going to suck the first couple of years, probably. Um, you know, so the experience takes some time to build up. So I think starting part time is actually a really good move. Um, it's what I'd recommend for almost everybody. And it also depends on how much money you want to make. But um, so in this video, I'm going to kind of go over what I would do if I was going to start part time right now and um, the advantages of it and the sort of infrastructure that you're going to need. So let's get to it. So if you're going to start farming part-time, there are some bare minimum things you're going to need no matter what your situation is. So this isn't like a part-time job. You, you need to actually have some money to start building a little bit of infrastructure. There is some bare minimum stuff. You can't start growing vegetables without. And to give you a little bit of a ballpark picture on what amount of money you could make your first year if you do really, really well. And this is a ballpark. This is a very loaded conversation. It's hard to answer on a video like this, but if I had to guess, if you were going to grow on about 20 to 30 50 foot beds, which is about what I did my first year, but I probably did, eh, actually I probably got around that amount of income. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you're going to be looking at about $1,200 per bed if you have a high ton, if you have a caterpillar tunnel, which I'm going to go over in a minute. Um, and that's a key detail. And I'm talking about my climate also. So uh, my climate is 120 day growing season. That's really short. And 
that's kind of if everything goes really well. Um, I would probably err on the side of 30 beds and expecting about $24,000 because you're going to screw things up. You know, you're, that's if everything goes really well, if you get those numbers. Um, there's just so many factors, but if you're going to look at a ballpark number, I'm going to say between twenty-four and thirty thousand dollars your first year um, that you could earn doing this. But that's the sales, okay? That is not that is before cost. So you you're not going to be paying yourself very much at all. So there's a couple of things you need to understand there, like, and it, it it really depends on what you want to do with your life, okay? If you don't want to keep scaling your farm, you could probably pay yourself a good half of that, you know, maybe more. It really depends on how you want to live your life. If you want to just farm part-time forever, you could pay yourself a decent income from that and get more, better and better on the same land base over time. You know, because your income to cost ratio is going to increase over time as you get better, as your infrastructure gets better. Um, but I would expect your first year or two to not pay yourself much at all just because of so many factors. You're going to screw things up, experience level, all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, but yeah, there's some bare minimum things that you're going to need. First thing is you're going to need some money. You're going to need at least $10,000. I'm just going to rough guess on that. Um, and I'm actually going off of a book that I'm going to go over in a minute here. This book, The Urban Farmer by Curtis Stone. Um, this is also something you absolutely need if you're going to start farming part time. This thing costs, I don't even know what it costs, 15, 20 bucks. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Um, I read this cover to cover like five times when I first started because I still use this sometimes because there's information in here that you just can't get on the internet. Um, he's got, Curtis Stone has a great YouTube channel. I'll link his YouTube channel. I've been following him for years. Um, he's one of the original influencers with market farming, in my opinion. Um, he's just great guy. Um, he's really innovated a lot on growing fast crops and profitable crops making money you know he's one of the first guys i've seen that really talked about that well and helped me understand the business side of farming vegetables and um this is a phenomenal beginner book it has everything in here i think some of the numbers are probably a little dated because i mean the thing is since i don't know 2018 2016 inflation has happened so numbers are going to be a little different but i think in this book he says start with about ten thousand dollars and that's kind of the model I'm going after. You might need 15 now because of inflation. So you really can't start farming until you have some money to play with because you got to have certain pieces of infrastructure to have anything at all. And another thing you're going to need is a wash pack system of some kind. This table right here is the exact root washing station that he talks about in this book. I built it and I still use it. I still like it better than buying something from outside because it's huge. I can wash 30, 40 bunches of carrots in here at once. And um, I also built it so it's really tall for me. And I can, I don't have to bend over because this is a place you're gonna be spending a lot of time in if you're gonna be farming. So you're gonna need a wash pack place. And in this book, he explains exactly how to start off in a lot more detail than I can in this video. So buy this book. It's a no brainer. Um, and you know, with all this kind of stuff, paying for information is going to save you thousands of dollars. This is a $20 book and it's going to make you thousands of dollars. Okay. So spend money on information because there's a lot of guys out there. It's just going to increase or it's going to shorten your time to paying yourself because if you learn from people that are already where you want to be, you're going to get there way faster than if you just screw around and try and figure it out yourself all the time. That's the slow way to do things. So buy this book. And the other main things you're going to need is land. So land is, if you're going to pay for the land, that's going to cost a lot of money. You know, around here, land is extremely expensive. It's, Thirty to fifty thousand dollars an acre to grow on the land that I'm growing on. I'm very fortunate that I don't have to pay that because this is my parents' property, 
and otherwise they actually want something to be growing on this land otherwise they have to take care of it that is the ideal situation where you could do really well with this because everybody who is in that income bracket has land that they don't want to mow or take care of and I, I, don't, I shouldn't say everybody but around here it's very common because there's a lot of wealthy people who have too much land that they know what to do with and would gladly lease it to somebody like you to grow on it for really cheap because they just want to see something growing on it. You know, this whole book is because he started growing in people's backyards. He did the same thing in a city, which is way harder in, in, in my opinion than what I'm doing, you know, because I've got it all on just three acres. So I don't have to go to eight different sites, but he literally did this in people's backyards in the city. Same thing. And you could work out all sorts of deals with people on that. And I, I would venture to guess that would work almost anywhere. I think in the city of Chicago, you might have a little trouble because there's just not that much land out there in the city. But even outside the city a little bit, you've got tons of land. And I would go that route instead of buying your land right away. Buying your land is tough and you can do it eventually. But I, I would say you could, I've had tons of people approach me about that. Like, do you want to grow on my land? No, I don't because I don't want to go to eight different places. But when I was, if I had no resources, I probably would. It wouldn't be a big deal. So land is a must. You got to have land to grow because this isn't hydroponic stuff. We're not doing it indoors and all that. So you got to have land and you got to have water. Water is a huge part of that. Um, I had a lot of trouble with that when I first started. I was using my parents' water, which is city water, and it's not enough water to grow vegetables. And I had to run a hose like 200 feet from the house to um, this plot of land. So that sucked. Um, and now I've upgraded to a well, but that's, a, that's not something you could probably do part time. So before you start growing on whatever land you got, you probably want to make sure you got at least a really nice city water setup um, that you have 24 seven access to, to actually grow things because this kind of farming needs water every day, especially right now in a growing season. You need to be able to water all the time. You don't want to be using like irrigation water that only comes every two weeks. Around here, we actually have irrigation water that runs in canals and farm waters, hay fields and stuff. But that's really bad because you, you could probably get away with that if you had a big cistern, but you're going to need access to water all the time. And those kinds of arrangements, you got to fight with other people and your, na your neighbors to get the water. It's a hassle. So you need to have regular access to water. That's a must. And let me just see if I'm forgetting anything here. So I have some notes. Oh, and the last thing that I would highly recommend if you have the money is a caterpillar tunnel and I'm going to go show you mine, but those are the cheapest greenhouses you can get. Everything grows better in a greenhouse. You can put those things up in a the city. They're small. You could probably get one as cheap as two to $3,000 and it will make you that much money the first year guaranteed because you're going to grow one extra crop there minimum and you can start growing cucumbers and tomatoes inside no matter where you live pretty much. Those are huge. The greenhouses is probably the second most important thing to water is having greenhouses because in my climate, I probably couldn't even, well, I did do it part-time um, with just growing outside, but having greenhouses is how you make a lot of money in a small space much quicker. And those farmer friend, farmer's friend caterpillar tunnels are the cheapest option out there. I'm going to show you mine in the next clip. So let's go. Okay. So we are in my, one of my hundred foot long, 16 by foot long wide caterpillar tunnels from farmer's friend. I've got two of these things. I just put them up less than a year ago. And these things have already probably made about at least $10,000 in revenue. And it's because I was able to grow a winter crop. I had crops earlier in the spring and now we're pretty much on to half fall crops in here and harvesting the last of my early spring crops. Huge deal. These things are really cheap. I'm going to put link to 
farmer's friend in the description because I think their product is just going to change the world eventually once people really understand how amazing these products are. And even if you're a homesteader, these are a game changer. They're so cheap. And once you start growing in greenhouses, you'll understand. And once you start paying for a real high tunnel, you'll understand how valuable these things are when you start because they are a fraction of the price of a big high tunnel. But these things, I live in a pretty high wind area and they can probably survive 50 mile an hour winds. And it's a little risky at that point, but you know, under 50 mile an hour, you're pretty safe. And there's all sorts of ways you can increase how tough they are. But these are so cheap. Um, I think I spent 10,000 for two of them. And like I said, they pay for themselves in less than a year. So it's a game changer. You've got to have a greenhouse because there's a lot of cool things you could do. I don't do them in mine because I have other greenhouses, but you can actually string up tomatoes and cucumbers in here. And I'm going to explain why those are so valuable in the next video, but, um, or in the next segment, but, uh, these things allow you to grow certain crops. You just can't grow outside effectively and make money in my opinion. So got to have caterpillar tunnels as soon as possible even if you're doing this part-time, they come in all sorts of sizes. You know, these are the biggest ones they got, but you could do them up to 25, short as uh, 25 foot long. And even that would be a game changer because you could start doing the vertical crops I'm talking about. So that's an essential piece. I think you can't, you, you, you're just going to do way better with even a caterpillar tunnel. So on to the next segment. So if you want to make the money that I was talking about in the beginning of this video, 24 to $30,000 your first year, you need to focus on the right crops. You can't just grow whatever you want, whatever you think is fun in a garden like winter squash or melons. You need to focus on really highly productive crops in a small space, which means crops like tomatoes and cucumbers if you have that caterpillar tunnel because you can grow them vertically. And the nice thing about growing vertically is <clears throat> this tomato plant is bringing, making me money from here to here, all in one square foot. And the cucumbers are even better. They make lots of money going up. So you can make a lot of money in a really small space. If you got a quarter acre, you can make a ton of money with these crops. In a caterpillar tunnel at least. You can't really do it outside. I mean, you can, but <clears throat> in most climates, it's pretty difficult to do that. You're going to have too much risk with rain and all sorts of stuff. But these crops make a lot of money in a small space. And the other crops you need to focus on are quick growing crops, which are almost all the stuff I'm talking about is laid out really well in Curtis Stone's book, The Urban Farmer, which I'm putting the link to below this video. He has a whole section on profitable crops, how much money they make in one bed. And we're talking about 30 inch beds, which is pretty standard market farm bed. These are all 30 inch wide. And he talks a lot about lettuce mix, salad turnips, radishes, arugula, herbs. Those are the crops that still are the ones that bring in the most money for my farm. And it's this, if you're going to start off doing this and you're halfway serious, you might as well get really, really good at growing all those because they, they're not easy. You know, it's not like, the first time you do it, you're going to be really successful. You know, you, this all is a skill. It all takes time to get good at. So you might as well get good at the crops that are really going to make your business money right off the bat. And so I'm really just going to recommend you buy that book and read it cover to cover, especially those sections on crops, because it's going to just explain everything I'm talking about in much more detail. Um, but you got to focus on the right crops because if you just grow broccoli and eggplant stuff that you think is fun you're gonna get nowhere and you're gonna quit so you might as well get really good at crops that are gonna make money because we're that's what this video is about is making money when you're working part-time because ultimately what's gonna make you a sustainable farmer is making money people talk a lot about sustainable farming but in my opinion the money part is more than half of the issue. It's not about just making soil better and stuff. You have to make money to continue to farm. Otherwise, you're done. You know, you can't do a quarter to a, an acre of crops that you just think are fun to grow. You can't do it that way. You got to focus on stuff that's going to make money. So 
focus on the right crops. I have another video a couple weeks ago that I put out that I'm going to put a link to here as well, where I go over the crops a little bit more. Um, you know, and the list can change a little bit, but you really, if you're going to do this part time and you want to make money, just do those crops I just mentioned and really focus on Curtis Stone's book. So the most important part of that income I was talking about at the beginning is your markets. This is where you branch out from just being a farmer and a grower to a entrepreneur. And in my opinion, all farmers are entrepreneurs, whether they know it or not, because you always have to find your own markets. I wouldn't say always, I guess there's some ways that the markets find you and that happens to me. But for the most part, especially when you're starting out, you've got to find your own markets. And what I'd recommend for brand new people is pretty much the farmer's market because most farmer farmers markets, and I would go with a small one to start off. And hopefully you're the only guy with vegetables there because then you're going to really do well. Um, because you really want to get good at selling at a farmer's market, displaying your crops right, for, you know, um, building the relationships with people. That's a skill. You know, that's a business skill that has nothing to do with farming, really. That's people skills. You have to have good people skills if you're going to do this. Um, you know, this has a lot more in common with entrepreneurship than it does with gardening. You know, gardening is, a, is I'm a huge fan of gardening. I teach a gardening course um, and I want people to grow their own food, but that is producing food for your family. This is a business where you're producing money for your family and you, and that means you have to be an entrepreneur and you have to be a salesperson. I'm not a salesperson. I'm an introverted person. I don't like sales. I, it's not my natural DNA, but I've gotten good at it because I need to be good at it. Otherwise my business doesn't work. And so I've done a lot of reading about sales and stuff. Um, and that can be really valuable when you start to talk to restaurants. You know, there's a game with restaurants. It takes a long time to build a relationship with a restaurant, but that's a great market too. If you have the right kind of restaurant, you really need to focus on kind of a small, higher priced bistro type place. I have basically one, two or three uh, decent restaurants in this small town that I sell to and they're the ones that are worth working with. And I live in a really small town too. You probably live in a bigger town than mine. I mean, 10,000 people here, so it's really small. Um, but the market goes up in the summertime because we have a lot of tourists. So I do reasonably well there. I'm moving away farther and farther away from restaurants, but the farmer's market is really going to be your bread and butter. And, you know, that does involve people skills. You know, when you first start, you need to be introducing yourself to every single person that walks to your booth and say, hello, I'm Zach. What's your name? Get to know them. Because at the end of the day, what's going to bring you that $24,000 is those people coming back to your booth. Not the first impression, but you need to build a relationship with them. The repeat customers thing is everything with this business that goes for any market. That's the beautiful thing about this business, though, is once you have that, you can, your long term business is pretty much set in stone because you don't have to resell to these people. You're selling food, they come back every week. A lot of businesses don't work like that. You have to constantly find new customers. So that's the beautiful thing about selling food. But if you can get that rolling and um, get that momentum going, it's an awesome business model. Another decent option is a veggie box or a CSA. And a lot of people have talked about that. It's like you sell a certain weeks, a certain amount of time uh, of weekly pickups in advance to people and they come to your farm and pick up. And I do that right now a little bit. I find it to be kind of challenging to sell uh, in my customer base and it's harder to sell like the crops that really make a lot of money in those because a lot of times in veggie boxes or CSAs, you're getting a much wider variety of crops like peppers and eggplant and stuff like that. And those are really hard to make money on. So I would say don't start off with that. Um, and it's just usually not going to pay you as well as a farmer's market. So just that's an option. It really depends on your context, but, um, and it's kind of a pain to, to deal with it. Cause a lot of times people will forget to pick up. It's a hassle. And the other thing is when you're first starting off, I would not recommend doing it because if you don't know what you're doing, you can't promise people you're going to have 50 bunches of carrots and then you screw up your germination and you don't have any. You prom you, when you sell those, you're promising your market already. And they paid you in advance, you have to deliver. 
and when you're not good it's going to be a disaster so start off with a farmer's market just sell what you're actually successful at growing and that's probably the way you should start don't even do restaurants yet and slowly build into those other markets but farmer's market first because it's the most flexible it pays you the best it's the most forgiving and you're going to learn a lot about all the other sales skills that you wouldn't learn in other markets so if you get through one season and you decide you really like it and you do really well and you think you want to continue to scale your business Here's a couple tips that I'd recommend because this is pretty much the path that I went on. My first season was 2020 and I was pretty much part-time, screwed up real bad. What I did um, was I, the first thing that I bought with the money that I made that year was the Never Sink Farm course. Uh, it's $2,000 or something. It's something around there and it's worth every, every penny. If you want to go full-time and really get serious about this, um, and that's when your work's really going to start. You know, if you want to go full time and build a business like this, you're going to start working a lot more than 20 hours a week. It's going to be a lot more than 40. The first couple of years, you're going to be working 60, 70 hours a week the first year or two, because you're not only going to be farming, you're going to have to build all the infrastructure. That's the hard part. Those are the really tough years. So you might not want to do this, but I mean, I just want to be real honest with people on how this works, because I pretty much didn't have a life those years. Um, I was building greenhouses on Sundays, you know, for a couple of years just to make this all happen. You know, now it's all happening and I don't necessarily have to do it all myself. Um, but when you're starting off, you do because you can't afford to pay other people to do it. So, um, you know, I'm four years into this now, my, like my fourth actual season, I'd say. Um, and, uh, I'm actually starting to really do well, but the first couple of years, it's just reinvesting. So it's something to think about. If you do want to try and do this, you want to consider the reality of the situation is you're going to not be making much money those first couple of years at all. You're really going to be putting it all back into the business if you want to do it right. And that, that course is going to save you thousands of dollars in mistakes on infrastructure. He explains, uh, my farm is modeled after his. And it's got a lot of the same techniques as Curtis Stone too, but there's a few more crop variety things going on. The infrastructure stuff is just invaluable for my context. You know, I have a well now and my wash pack is all set up like his, you know, those are um, ways that you can make a lot of money doing this. My goal with my farm is to make 300,000 a year in sales, probably four years from now. We're going to probably be making 100000 this year for the first time, hopefully more. Um, there's still a lot that's kind of undecided with that. Um, but those are the kinds of numbers you can make. And we're growing, we're going to probably only grow on an acre and a half eventually. You know, the actual growing space is only an acre and a half. That's not a lot of land. Um, so the long term potential of this is great if you're willing to stick with it for a good couple years. You know, I'm going to start paying myself a little bit this year, but it's not going to be much. So you're not going to get rich right away. But once you're at that level of 300000 you can start to pay yourself a pretty decent income. And on my opinion, I think eventually I could pretty much leave the farm because I'm already seeing that I have three part-time employees. I'm running out of stuff for them to do because they're good. They're really good. Um, but... There's so much in this system of farming that is in the Never Sink course that makes your life so much easier than a lot of other farming techniques where you don't have to work 70 hours a week once the farm is built. That's the key detail I'm talking about. The first couple of years, you still got to do all those other really not fun things to get the farm built out. But once it is, you know, harvesting a whole bed of kale, a beginner can do it in like 45 minutes and that produces you... Oh God, I don't know. Um, 250 to $300 or something like that. You know, that's really profitable. Okay. You know, something like that. It, I, I I'm, might be wrong on my numbers, but it's really profitable when you get that rolling and then you actually have your markets all set up. It takes years to get to that level. So just some things to think about, but that course is going to teach you all of the methods on how to doing it, how to do it. And it's still going to take you a couple of years to get good at those methods, but that's a game changer. The other thing I'd recommend is getting a loan. 
getting a loan to finance all the stuff talked about in that course, because you're probably not going to have $50,000 lying around to start putting in a $10,000 well or a wash pack building like I have, which is about $20,000. And then a greenhouse like that, which is about $25,000. That's a lot of money. You know, when you're, when you're doing a part-time and you made $24,000 your first year, you don't have the money to do that. But FSA, which is Farm Service Agency, is a uh, government loan operation that basically f loans to a lot of the bigger farms. As a program, they do micro loans, and that's what I did. Um, they offer it to farms like this. Uh, it's, it's really small right now. There's not many farms doing it yet, but it's, it's happening. And I got my loan $50,000 for 1.75% interest rate. I, I guess that I'm guessing that interest rate has gone up since then, but probably not that much. And it's a long process to get approved and all that stuff, but it's worth it. And I think a lot of people could do that. And once you get to that first payment, your second payment should be a lot easier, you know, because you're going to be paying it, I think over seven years or something. And it's about $8,000 a year or something along, along those lines. And you should be able to make that your first year if you did it part-time one year. Um, and then now I'm at the point where I don't even worry about the payment. It's just automatic and I don't have to think about it, but that's pretty cheap money and it's available to farms like this. And uh, it will get you to where you want to go way faster than if you're going to just pay for it, you know, by your own capital that you make from your own business right away. Because all that infrastructure is very expensive. I mean, I'm still putting in tens of thousands of dollars into infrastructure every year because my farm's still pretty new. I'm going to put another $15,000 in my nursery this fall, you know. So it's expensive to build the infrastructure to make it painless, but you want it to be painless because you want to have a life. You don't want to be working 70 hours a week. In my opinion, this is how, I, how I'm doing it, I guess. But I don't want to work 70 hours a week for the rest of my life, you know. So I'm putting in infrastructure that's going to make my life really, really easy, like automated water timers and all that stuff. Try and put as much money into that as possible the first couple of years because it's just going to make your life easier. And so the last thing I want to talk about is for building greenhouses, there's an NRCS grant. Um, I'm sure a lot of market farmers already know about this, but if you're brand new to this space, you probably don't. That's a government program also that actually pays for greenhouses. Um, basically all you have to do is apply for it. You get accepted. And then within a year, roughly you get to start your project, which means you still have to pay for the materials up front, which is a lot of money. Um, you know, materials for that greenhouse were about $22,000, but once it's built and the plastic is on, you get pretty much all of that reimbursed. And the first couple are hard because you still got to build them yourself. And that's really hard. But that's another way to get your stuff permanently set up. And um, I'm at the point where I'm hoping to be able to pay somebody to build my next one. And then it's just, you could scale the business much easier at that point. But greenhouses, if you want to get to that $300,000 level or whatever level you want, you know, you're going to have to have greenhouses because you just, you're making at least 30% more money per square foot than you would just growing outside. And I love growing outside. I really do. It's my favorite. I don't like working in the greenhouses as much because this is just so romantic. I love it. But the bottom line is I'm still waiting on about 70% of the crops I planted in the spring and it's July 31st right now. They, they're still mostly not ready. The only thing I've got that's in abundance is this kale. Kale grows fast and the quick crops that I talk about are really doing well, but most of my carrots and stuff out here are not even close. Uh, celery, not even close. You know, it, your greenhouse is just gonna increase your profits because you're gonna get stuff earlier when it's more valuable and uh, you just can't have enough of the greenhouses. I mean, eventually I'm gonna stop after about three more. Um, and uh, then I don't think I'm going to need any more. But it, it think, a lot of things can change in three or four years. So to, those are some things to think about. If you do like this work after a year and you want to get bigger, go down those routes. Uh, look into them because it's going to save you a lot of time and effort. Um, because farming is really hard. No matter how you do it, it's really hard. So you need as much help and advice as you could possibly get. Um, 
you know, and I had a lot of great advice from those courses, that book, a lot of the guys who came before me, I mean, I'd be dead. I, I would be in the hospital by now if it wasn't for those things, because I, I definitely would have quit without the, the guys who blazed the trail before me. So what I'm trying to do is blaze it a little more for a little bit younger group. And um, I hope that, that this video is helping to do that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next